Now, if you do buy the Apple Watch, you're going to find yourself doing this a lot more. Looking down at your watch, not just to tell time, but also interact with notifications, to respond to texts, to even take phone calls on it. Now, is this a distraction? Is this useless? In some ways, yes. In some ways, not. And in this review, I really want you to walk away from it with a better understanding of this Apple Watch, about what it can do. And I'm going to just tell you how I've been using it in my daily life to try to complement my cell phone instead of replace it. But right off the bat, then we're gonna get the biggest negative about the Apple Watch out of the way, and that is the price. So there are three different versions of the Apple Watch. You have the Apple Watch Sport, which starts at $350, and that is made out of aluminum. Then you have the Apple Watch that starts at $550, and that is made out of stainless steel. And then you have the Apple Watch Edition, which starts off at $10,000, and that is made out of 18 karat gold. So just $10,000, that's nothing. That's chump change. Uh, but you have these three, three different versions that go up in price depending on the size of the watch that you get and also the particular band that you get. But first let's look at the two different sizes because you have 38 millimeter and 42 millimeter to choose from with all three versions of the Apple Watch. Now this is great because people have different size wrists from kids to women to men and everybody has a different size wrist and you have an option at least because most smartwatches only have a one size fit all solution. But for me I even want a bigger size version because I do kind of have a big wrist and I could definitely go for a bigger display play on this Apple Watch to make navigating around the software a little bit easier. And I'll cover that a little bit later on this, in this review, but I can expect Apple later on to release a bigger version of the Apple Watch just to have at least that option available to users. Now, besides sizes, the other thing that's going to fluctuate the price of the Apple Watch is going to be which particular band that you choose. So you have the option to get a sport band, which I'm rocking in this review. And then this band, of course, is going to be better for working out because you can sweat in it and get it dirty. And then you also have higher quality bands that are made out of metal or made out of leather. And these are going to be more for if you're going out or just want to dress casually um, or you just want to have different colors to go with different outfits. You have an option with that. And Apple has made it stupid easy to be able to switch out these bands. It's basically toolless and you just need your fingertip and it just has one little button that you need to press down and you can slide the band out. And then when you're ready to put the replacement band in, you just slide that in and it will lock itself in place. So this is the easiest solution that I've seen for not only smart watches, but also just regular watches in general. And so style-wise with this Apple Watch, I mean, it's decent. I wouldn't really call it fashion, me personally, uh, but it does have a square watch face, which if you really want a very stylish, sexy looking watch face, you probably want to go with the round one like you find on the Moto 360. But that doesn't mean the Apple Watch to me is ugly, uh, but the style angle that they're going at with it, I'm just really not seeing it that much. Uh, but again, I'm okay with the design of the watch as a whole. Now, just taking the tour around the outside of the watch, you will see a couple holes on the left-hand side, and those are going to be your speaker and microphone because you can use this Apple Watch to take phone calls with. And so when you do receive an incoming phone call, you have the option to either accept or decline that phone call, and it will vibrate and notify you on your wrist of that. And if you do choose to accept it, I mean, you are going to look a little weird walking like this or talking like this uh, if you're out in public. So me personally, I would never do that out in public. For me, I mostly use this feature for when I'm driving or if I'm around the house and my phone may be on the table charging or in the other room, I'll pick it up on my watch and move over to my phone once I am able to reach it and transfer the call over. So it does have some usefulness. It's just, you look stupid doing this in public basically. Now, on the bottom of the Apple Watch, you will find some sensors down there that are useful for tracking your health and your fitness and your exercise goals. So you have a heart rate monitor, you have GPS, and also you have an accelerometer inside of this watch. And so this is going to be great for running because you can be separate from your phone. You don't have to take your phone uh, along with you on a run if you do have the Apple Watch to be able to track your progress because once you get close to your phone after your workout, it will sync all that information back over. But it can track information like your calories burn and how far you ran and how active you were throughout the day, but I don't know if it's going to be as accurate as other fitness devices or dedicated fitness devices on the market right now, but it is a good thing to have on there if you are trying to be health conscious. Now, this watch also has eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now, you can use two gigabytes of that storage for music. So you can download music using the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, sync that over to your watch. And now, if you do have a pair of Bluetooth headphones, this can be your sole source for music while you're working out or running, instead of to have a separate iPod strapped onto your arm or in your pocket. So that is useful for that. And then about 75 megabytes of the storage is used for photos, and the rest is going to be used for apps and system resources. Now, on the right-hand side, you have two different 
different ways you can interact with the Apple Watch. You have the digital crown, which is a scroll wheel that you can also press in like a button. And then below that, you just have a button. Now you combine these buttons with the ability to force press and also just do a regular press on the watch. You have a number of ways you can interact with different apps and different software features. And all of them don't always take advantage of all of these buttons and input methods. So it is just a slight learning curve that you have to have. It really took me about two or three days to really just get fully comfortable with using the Apple Watch without making any mistakes. And so let's look a little bit deeper into the digital crown because the digital crown really comes useful when you're looking at an app like CNN and you're trying to scroll through a number of news stories and you really don't want your finger to be blocking all the information on the screen. You can use this digital crown to scroll up and down through all of them. And also too, when you're looking at the apps menu, when you have all these apps scattered all over your screen, um, you can use a digital crown to zoom into that app that's in the center of your focus to be able to open it. Now the other button is used to quickly access your favorite contacts. And you can set up these favorite contacts in the Apple Watch app on your phone. But after you press the button, you can actually use the scroll wheel to scroll through all of those. So again, you're using a combination of these buttons through some of the apps to interact with them. And it works very smoothly. Again, the digital crown does make for a very smooth experience instead of having to, again, use your finger on your screen the entire time. And so these buttons do complement each other. So they're not really a bad thing. It just takes a little while to get used to. Now, another new unique way to interact with the Apple Watch is with a force press. So this force press is not just a regular tap, but you actually tap and press in on the display. And it feels like the display is sinking in, but it isn't, but that's the type of feedback it gives you. And so depending on which app you're in, this gives you the option to do certain things. But again, some apps don't use this force press at all. So it's kind of hit and miss. And you really gotta try it out for the first few days with a number of apps, just, just try to see if it's actually built into the app itself. But if you wanna change your wallpaper, you need to do a force press on the home screen and I'll give you the option to go and change your wallpaper and customize it. Or if you wanna create a new message while in the messages app, you need to do a force press and it'll give you that option. So it's useful. And I love the sensation that you get from doing the force press. It really does feel like I'm pressing down into my screen, which I'm not. Um, I just wish that there's a more of a clear understanding about which apps actually took advantage of this feature. And so with the buttons and the force press, those are the physical ways that you interact with the Apple Watch, but you can still use your voice because the Apple Watch does take advantage of Siri. And so you of course know Siri can help you with finding out information about different things and you can use your voice to set up a reminder or a calendar appointment. But the main reason why I use Siri on the Apple Watch is to open up apps. You can tell it to open up apps instead of having to press a number of buttons and zoom in and scroll in. It's so easy just to say open Instagram and it will go ahead and open that up for you. So that's the best way to actually navigate the number of apps that you have on your Apple Watch. But you can also use it to respond to text messages instead of using either the pre-written messages that come with the Apple Watch or the ones that you set up in the app itself. Uh, you can also just use your voice to say, hey, I'll be there in 10 minutes or I'll see you later at this time or meet me at this particular place. Now, because Siri doesn't always recognize what you're saying, you can either choose to send that message as a voice message or you can have it transcribe it and send it as a text message the way Siri thinks you've heard it. So Siri does, again, a really good job most of the time at understanding what I'm saying. But if I'm in a situation where it's just not really figuring out what I'm saying, I just send it as a voice message and it's just a good thing to have that option. All right, so that's how you interact with the watch, but it's going to really take a deeper look into the watch OS. That is the operating system that is running on the Apple watch. Now this is version 1.0. So definitely Apple didn't get everything perfect with this. Uh, but I do think with all the stuff that they do have on the watch, they did a decent job at making it manageable to navigate and get around everything and having a lot of options for different type of people, depending on how you really want to use this watch. Now first at the home screen, you'll see your watch face and you have a number of watch faces to choose from that Apple has preloaded on the Apple watch. Now right now you can't download any new watch faces from the app store or put your own on your watch yourself. Hopefully Apple brings this in the future. I mean, that should have been something here on day one, but you do have a number of watch faces that you can customize and you can customize some of them like adding different weather information or adding a timer or adding uh, different time information from different places of the world. And you even have one where it shows you where you are in the, the world itself and you can actually change that to the moon. They have the Mickey Mouse one, which would probably be very popular uh, with kids. And you have some which just show you a different flower species or a different uh, underwater animal species every time you look at your watch face. And so these watch faces, again, are customizable. You can change the color, you can change all these different things. And it makes when you glance at your watch to not only just see the time, but see your upcoming calendar appointment. Um, and those things are pretty useful to have in your watch face.
Now from your home screen, if you were to slide from the bottom, now you're here. I mean, if you were to slide from the bottom to the top, you're now in these glances. And these are basically quick look at some of your favorite apps. So this can be your Instagram app. You just wanna see some of the latest posts from the people that you're following. You can have that in your glances. Now some of the more useful glances are going to allow you to check your heart rate or to also control the music that's on your phone. You can choose to play, fast forward, rewind, and also control the volume. And also you have some quick toggles to put your watch into airplane mode, do not disturb mode. Or you can even ping your phone from your watch just in case your phone is hiding from you under your couch, which that happens to me a lot. Um, but one of the other useful Useful glances is to be able to look at your battery information. Now, let's going to talk about battery real quick because Apple says this Apple Watch has all day battery life. Uh, and that is true. If you are going to be using this watch a lot to play games, to do a number of things with it, it should be able to last you a day and then you need to put it on a charger at the end of the night. Now, me personally, the way I really use this watch is for mostly notifications and texts. Um, this watch lasts me easily two days. I mean, I woke up the next day and my watch still had about 42%. And so this is with me regularly glancing at my watch to read a notification from ESPN or CNN and also responding to text messages and actually answering a couple of phone calls here and there on there. Uh, but I wasn't really like checking the solar system or doing different things like that. So I think that's why the watch was able to survive for so long. Now, I just said I mostly use this watch for notifications because that is the single-handedly most useful feature of this watch is to be able to quickly glance down at a notification interact with it to a certain degree, uh, but also be able to kind of keep in contact with your phone without having to pull your phone out of your pocket or your purse. Now, when you do get a notification in, it gives you a, a nice little vibration on your wrist and you can choose to either look at it or not. And also you have an option for an audio tone if you want to, to be able to notify you that way. But if you just want to check your notifications, you just need to slide down from the top and go towards the bottom and you'll be able to scroll through your notifications using your finger or the digital crown. Now you can customize which apps send you notifications to your Apple Watch within the Apple Watch app on your phone. So you can either get a ton of them or you can just choose to get just a few of them. I recommend the latter um, because those notifications can come in rapid fire and that is where it can get a little bit annoying uh, and a little bit of distracting. But if you just tone down those notifications, it shouldn't be a problem. And so for me, I just find it more convenient just to look down at my wrist, check the notification, and then look away and decide whether I wanna do something with that or not, instead of feeling the vibration in my pocket from my phone or hearing it vibrate on the table and looking at it, especially if I'm having a conversation. That's just a little bit more distracting than just me looking down at my watch. So again, this is where the watch complements your cell phone because you still can't do a lot with those notifications. I mean, some apps allow you to open them up on the Apple Watch, but most of the time you just just want to kind of just look to see what it is and to decide whether or not you want to spend more time to interact with them. Now from day one, there were a number of apps that you can start using with the Apple Watch right out of the box. Now some of these apps are better suited just to stay on your phone. I don't think they needed to be ported over to the Apple Watch because they really don't add that much more functionality. But there are some apps that are useful, like Foursquare, which I do use a lot because I can check in just using my watch and it's very easy to do that. Or it'll give me a notification saying, hey, you're back at this place. Do you want to check in here? And just one tap on my watch and I'm done instead of having to unlock my phone and open up the app and do different things like that. So again, we are in the very early days of apps being on the Apple Watch. So I don't want to be too critical of them just yet. I want to give them a few months to really see how developers start to take advantage of it. But you still will probably find something that you find useful to be able to use on your watch. And when it comes to software performance, it's hit and miss. Most of the time it's going to be smooth, but sometimes when I open up uh, all my different apps using a digital crown, it's a little delay until I can really start using my finger to swipe around. That doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen freaking enough to kind of get on my nerves. And also too, a lot of these apps do not refresh in the background. So when I do open up the CNN app, it's not already going to be loaded up with all the new news stories. It's going to have to fetch and get that information after I actually tap on that app. So that's going to take, you know, a few seconds for it to do that. So again, I just wish that a lot of background refreshing went on a lot more with these apps. And also Apple does need to make some software improvements to make it just more of a smoother experience. And so with all this being said about the Apple Watch, I really wanted to answer the question whether or not this watch is useful. And I can say that it does have its uses. It is useful to a certain point for everybody. For me, again, that kind of stops um, after I get done, you know, using it for Google Maps or using it to control my music um, and also check, you know, different fitness goals throughout the day. I mostly use it for notifications. So that's the main kicker for me, but that may not be the same for you. And so when people look at this watch, 
it's kind of one of those things where if you don't really honestly feel that you're going to be using it and you can't justify that high price tag, then don't, don't get the Apple Watch. It's not going to be for you. You're going to be disappointed in it. But if you can kind of see the upside with the watch about how, again, it's going to try to complement your phone um, and you can get over the price point somehow, uh, it's going to be something that if you're an iPhone user, uh, you may really like and learn to love, but it could take some time, especially just over the initial learning curve and just trying to figure out where this watch is going to fit into your daily activities. So ultimately, I think Apple is off to a good start. This is the one product I can really say that version 2.0 should be the one that I think a lot more people will want to get. But we're going to really have to wait to see about how Apple handles this watch. And so that's it. That's my Apple Watch review. Leave your comment down below what you think about this Apple Watch. And also make sure you do subscribe if you're not already subscribed and follow me on all my different social networks. And I really want to know what you think about this product and how it compares to other smart watches. So leave that comment down below with that feedback. And like always, thanks for watching this video, guys. And I will catch you later. Peace.